It's as hard as it's ever been to start a robotics company. Part of that is because expectations have increased so much. Looking at UAVs, looking at heavy industry, industrial applications and autonomous vehicles, there's a lot of component technologies in those areas that need to come down the cost curve before it makes sense for us. Why now? Why robotics compared to five, ten years ago? We look at it as a confluence of three or four different factors. Right? Number one, technology. It's much more accessible in terms of the price point. Technology in terms of much being much more robust in nature, uh, much more faster in terms of quanti quantification of different functions. That's number one. Number two, we look at demographics. So demographics in terms of a very aging population, rising healthcare costs, and the, the nature of robots being able to uh, provide a much more affordable solution. And the third one was really important, which is really a change of perception in the public's eye about robotics. For robotics and AI though, we're very much in this phase. We're in the early eruption phase. The infrastructure hasn't been fully laid out. The platforms haven't been standardized, so they don't exist. Uh, it's still very hard to interact with robots. It's very hard to interact with the technologies to build robots. So we're, we're very much here. And what that means is that you have to approach how you position your startup, your company, um, in a very different way. There's a lot more market education. You need to be much more careful about the VCs you pick to partner up with you, the employees you hire, the customers you target, and how you design the company, right? That's the difference between a robot and automation. That's the difference between robots and software. It's the difference between robots and robotic. Uh, while, you know, while, while the machine's gonna take care of this, you, know, you can actually redesign your business process and fundamentally gain you know, quantum leaps. Uh, in, in, in cycle time, ROI, and so on. Now we are in the era where machines are now responsible for you know, decisions and judgments and all, right? So these are intelligent systems, right? So this basically help humans to make better choices reliably and fast, right? But it's key for us. Uh, one thing which is key is we need to have this mindset that this is, this, you know, robots are augmenting humans here. They're not out to take away our jobs and stuff. And knowledge workers need to come to see these smart machines as equal partners and, you know, collaborators in helping you guys, you know, you or, or us humans be, be more creative. Know so much about people. We know a lot of information about uh, cars and maps. We just simply put our system into an internal car facing camera, which is observing the driver uh, and getting a lot of a stream for behavior. And we can actually anticipate because idea, right? We know when the person is going to open the fridge. We actually know three to 10 seconds in advance. What are you going to do next on the road before you even sub subconsciously consciously know? Before you even make a single turn, uh, any hint to the car, we know in advance what you're going to do with a pretty high accuracy. And the reason you can do that is that before you even do it, people have this kind of um, uh, subconscious behaviors, like they tilt their head if they are going to turn left. It's so, so, and you kind of start glancing and you haven't yet realized that you're trying to turn left. It registers to you a few seconds later what you're trying to do. Um, and this is this is a very interesting because then it can allow the cars to be more selective in performing certain assistive actions or autonomous actions.